Welcome back to the Maths Guy, everyone. Today we're looking at the expanded column method of multiplication. Let's begin. Okay, so we're looking at these two questions here. We have a green chili challenge and then we have a harder red chili challenge. But before we do that, let's have a look at the steps that we're gonna to need to follow in order to solve these questions using this method. So step number one, we're gonna create our column method grid, but we're gonna to remember to put our ones, tens, and hundreds up there because that's gonna help us. You're gonna see more about that later. Then step two, we're gonna to start to multiply our digits starting with the smallest values. Step three, we're not gonna forget our placeholders. And again, you'll understand what that means later. And then step four, our final step, we're gonna add up our individual elements to get our final answer. Okay, so let's look at our green chili challenge. We have four times 265. So step one said to complete our grid, making sure we don't forget our ones, tens, and hundreds. So what does that mean? Well, we're gonna arrange our numbers in our columns. So we're gonna have 265, but at this point, we're gonna make sure we put our ones, tens, and hundreds here so that we don't forget where our next digit goes because this four is really important. We put it in our ones column. So the four goes here. Then I'm gonna put my equals lines and my multiplication sign, and I'm ready to start. Let's just tidy it up a little bit. Here we go. Okay, now the first thing to think about is that we are still working with partitioned numbers. So a bit like our grid method where we worked out the individual elements and multiplied them by each other, we're still doing that. We're still partitioning these numbers here. So let's have a look what I mean by that. Now my next step said to start with our smallest value. So we're gonna start with our ones. And my first question therefore says four times five because I'm multiplying this four times the five. And four times five is 20. Now I can move to my next question, which is four times six. Well, it's not a six, it's in the tens column. So it holds the value of a 60. So my question is four times 60. And here's how we're gonna to start to learn something really important about how we're gonna deal with our placeholders. Four times 60 is quite difficult. What's much easier is to just multiply four times six but four times six is 10 times smaller than doing four times 60. So I can make my answer 10 times bigger by putting a special placeholder. And if I put that placeholder here, whatever I put in front of it is now gonna be 10 times larger. So I can do four times six, which is 24. And by putting it in this next column here, I've now written 240. So four times 60 is 240. Okay, let's do the last part. I've got four times two. But we know now that that doesn't just hold a value of a two, it's in the hundreds column, so it holds the value of a 200. So my question is four times 200. Now again, four times 200 could be seen as being a bit difficult. So I'm gonna look at how many placeholders I've got. I've got one, two placeholders. So if I put my placeholders in, one, two, now all I have to do is four times two, and four times two is eight. So now I've multiplied all my individual sections. What I have to do now is add it back together. So zero plus zero plus zero equals zero. Two and four equals six, and two and eight equals 10. So my answer to four times 265 is 1060. So our red chili challenge is a little bit harder because it's now got a one digit multiplying by a four digit. But I'm gonna let you in on a secret. I don't think it's actually harder. I think this might just be a little bit longer. Let's see what I mean. Now I'm gonna follow my next step, and my next step said to multiply my smallest values. In this case, it's eight times two. And eight times two is 16. Okay, my next question says eight times, that's right, 70. Not just seven, 70. So eight times 70. How many placeholders do I have in my 70? One. So I can put my placeholder in place and just do eight times seven. And eight times seven is 56. So my answer to eight times 70 is 560. Now I can do my next step, eight times, that's right, 300. So eight times 300. Now how many placeholders do I have in 300? One, two, so I can put those in, one, two. Now I can just do eight times three, which is 24. Put that in place and therefore my answer to eight times 300 is 2,400. Now I can do my final step, which is eight times six. Is it a six? 6,000. So eight times 6,000. So how many placeholders do I have in 6,000? One, two, three. 
So I can put those in place. One, two, three. And now I can simply ask, what's eight times six? And eight times six is 48. So my answer to eight times 6,000 is 48,000. So am I finished? No, not yet, because I've partitioned all my questions so far and done the individual sections. Now I need to put it back together and add it up for my final total. So we're gonna add up our columns. In my ones column, I only have a six. In my tens, I have a one and a six equals seven. In my hundreds, I have a five and a four equals nine. In my thousands, I have a two and an eight equals 10. So carry my one over, put my zero in my thousands column. And now in my thousands, I have a four plus my one is five. So my answer to eight times 6,372 is 50,976. Okay, let's look at our things to remember for this method. So the first thing we need to remember is to create our grids and make sure we put our ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, and whatever else we need on the top so that we don't put anything in the wrong column. Second, we must always start by multiplying our smallest values first and then progressively work up to the larger values. Next, don't forget those placeholders. Remember, it's a nice trick to be able to see how many zeros are in our question, put those into our answer and then multiply just the easy numbers. And then finally, don't forget to add up our final answer because all we've done at that point is multiply the partition sections. We then need to add it all up. Okay, here are three questions for you to work on. Have a go at answering them. Put your answers in the comment section and I'm gonna mark them all. Okay, I hope this video has been helpful for you. If it has, subscribe to the channel because there's gonna be daily videos like this to help you get through all of your maths needs. But for now, peace out.